So none of you probably remember the 2009 remake of The Electric Company. It was weird, to say the least. Music by Lin-Manuel Miranda and so many random guest stars like James Monroe Iglehart and Pete Wentz and Whoopi Goldberg and basically everyone who was involved in Hamilton or in the Heights or both. The show was insane, but in its insanity, it was hiding some surprisingly complex and kind of progressive idea. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tessa, are you seriously going to talk about the deeper meanings of a PBS kid show that nobody watches? Well, yeah, because I love it. And also, I have a plan. So sit back, relax, and I will tell you how a show you never watched is surprisingly more thoughtful than you would think. Number one, diversity. This is a show that was created to help kids, especially minority kids, have a better reading ability once they got into school. For the heroes, there are two Latino siblings, Hector and Jessica Ruiz. There, her one white friend, Lisa, and a not, and the least threatening kid you ever see, a black boy, Keith Watson. Now, this is a pretty diverse set of heroes race-wise and gender-wise, it's pretty even. And the villains have some diversity, but also they don't at the same time. You have Manny Spamboni, a Latino boy. You have Danny Rebus, a black guy who is pinnacle fedora culture of 2009. You and you have two white girls, Annie Scrambler and Francine Carruthers, who also happens to be rich as hell. I mention Francine's money because it plays into a lot of the other things going on later in the progressivism of the show. Her wealth and its influence on how people perceive her and some of the other characters is actually talked about a lot. Another thing that the show did that a lot of shows don't really do as much is showed that authority figures aren't always as great as kids like to think they are. There are a lot of in-universe celebrities and TV show hosts and characters who are involved in the media that characters tend to hero worship that are usually either phony or kind of incompetent. You have game show hosts who have phony smiles and don't have an audience even though they pretend they have an audience and generally are oblivious to what's going on around them. You've got other TV show hosts who are very gullible into believing whatever their guests say and flip-flop sides. You have Tiki Barber, who, again, believes whatever you tell him. Generally, this classification of adults shows kids that Celebrity adults are flawed and not necessarily as honest or as smart or as with it as they necessarily would want them to be. The show also highlights politicians and how they don't always exhibit the traits we necessarily want them to have. Now, the Skolekian ambassadors are 
pretty much shown as well-meaning but not always on top of things and generally susceptible to bribery and aren't good at spotting genuineness all the time. The character of Irma Quickly, for instance, instantly blames both Keith and Francine for her car getting crashed when A, she should have been paying attention to her parallel parking, and B, the situation is entirely Francine's fault. However, you see that personal vendettas can get in the way, and sometimes a politician's personal vendetta against a group can lead to rash decision making. Now, if the characters are able to persuade her out of her decisions, but it is still a glance into the idea that not everyone who makes our laws necessarily is doing it for the right reasons. There are also a lot of small business owners on the show. You have your goofy, incompetent ones who don't really notice what's going on. You have ones who are trying to be legit, but are struggling and therefore sometimes don't stay as legit as they necessarily would want to, them to be. Sigmund. I'm talking about Sigmund Scrambler. And you have shady people who are manipulating the market in more ways than one. But above all, you have one small business owner who's shown as probably one of the most trustworthy adults in the show, Leo Watson, Keith's dad. Leo is the owner of the Electric Diner. He's a single father, and he is shown as responsible, trustworthy, caring, kind, but he also doesn't always have the answers to things. In fact, unless the question's like, what's this vegetable? He probably doesn't have the answer for it. Which brings us to the other parental figures on the show. You have, as previously mentioned, Sigmund Scrambler, who wants to be a good example, but falls on hard times and often has to resort to using his niece's tricks and schemes to help himself flourish and survive. You have Mrs. Bamboni, who is very dominating and very strict, but also has problems seeing the flaws in her own kids, which results in Manny being able to get away with a lot, but also not really be able to communicate some of his own feelings. And you have Antigone Carruthers. Antigone is extremely wealthy, extremely fond of, of spoiling her daughter, and really shows that in the nature versus nurture debate, nurture has a lot to do with it. The show shows that Francine's spoiled, needing to be in charge, needing to be the star personality isn't because she's just born a spoiled little brat. She's been told this her whole life. Her mom tries to buy a house of a famous author to tear it down and build a hotel named after her daughter and put a giant golden statue in front of it of her kid. And they also show that Antigone's power and influence masks the truth and prohibits what is right from always happening. In Out to Launch, her unwillingness to admit that Francine could have done something wrong ends up extending the process of 
this whole billboard fiasco by a lot. And really, that's what they're showing, that even our loving parents can make mistakes and have an influence on how we as their children act and how that isn't always a good thing. The show also highlights a lot of critical thinking skills for a show that's teaching kids about reading. Because there's times where they're talking about silent E and ING and here's how you can make a dollar out of nickels and dimes. But they also talk a lot about critical thinking and analyzing information that's put in front of you to determine whether or not you personally believe. For instance, Francine makes vlogs throughout the show and manipulates with editing what people are saying and makes them look bad. And everyone knows she does this, but because they're not thinking, they're taking things at face value and often her mom's name is attached to it, people will believe it. They'll believe that there's a billboard saying that Hector's a liar, that Lisa wanting books to smell bad is a reason not to make her the book club president. And it's up to the heroes to prove with their own evidence that just because someone says something, it isn't true. And you have to look at the evidence and figure out what makes the most sense. Another great example of this is the episode Call Me Tiki. Manny Spamboni creates a machine to steal Tiki Barber's parrot and blame Jessica, who's pet sitting. Now, someone kid planning a kidnapping of a bird isn't really her fault, but Manny is trying to make her look bad, and at first, Tiki Barber is 100% believing it, but the episode shows that critical thinking skills and deduction and making sure you have all of the facts before you make a judgment is essential in a decision-making process. And just because something sounds good doesn't necessarily make it true. Something similar happens in the episode Bluefoot. There's a show, Real or Fake, and the episode is dedicated to Bluefoot, a Bigfoot parody, and they're trying to figure out whether or not he's real. Now, evidence is constantly being provided that this is a real creature. They get hair, they get footprints, they see pictures, they have all of this evidence. But the episode isn't about collecting evidence, it's about analyzing the evidence you have analyzing people's motives for presenting the evidence and coming to your own conclusion. And the people who believe it aren't sheeple who are in the end proven to be stupid. Everyone except for Hector at some point believes that Bluefoot is real. What they're saying isn't if you believe something you're a gullible idiot. What they're saying is you need to think about what makes the most sense, not necessarily what you want to be true, because people could be manipulating you into doing things like buying their products or voting for them. They don't say that in the episode, but it's kind of where they're going with it. You can't trust something just because it's what you want to be true. You have to analyze it and make sure that it makes sense and that there's no agenda behind it. And that's just a kind of brief but also surprisingly long analysis of why this show is actually really good for kids to watch. It's not just Silent E is a ninja and ITE versus IGHT, though that's also important. And so those are my thoughts. If any of you have any opinions on this, I'd love to hear them, though I doubt you do. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.